a very good afternoon so thank you organizers special thanks to professor anuj maheshwari uh, professor srinivas murthy professor uh, ns verma and professor anubha srivastava for uh, for their kind invitation so the uh, things which look simple in life are complex if you go in depth so today i am going to talk about a topic uh, a disease which you daily encounter in your clinical practice but if you go in depth then you will understand there are various things which you have to understand uh, in the differential diagnosis so uh, today i am going to talk about an approach to pcos mimicker so as we all know pcos stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome and this is a most common endocrinopathy in a female of reproductive age group and it leads to a uh, multiple problems leading to infertility and various pregnancy complication i think this house must be well aware about this complications in terms of gestational diabetes pregnancy induced high blood pressure uh, miscarriages type 2 diabetes various psychiatric disorders or abnormal uterine bleeding so uh, when we talk about the pcos we should understand that the, what are the symptoms so we can divide the symptoms uh, in like the hyperandrogenism or presence of hyperandrogenemia the oligo or anovulation and there are polycystic ovarian morphology on ultrasound so i think in your clinical practice you must have seen many females coming with ultrasound report just level as polycystic ovarian uh, suggestive of polycystic ovarian syndrome and you think that this is pcos a very simple case of pcos but uh, now i will sensitize this how this how this simple things will turn into a complex thing so uh, just brief information about uh, the different terminology which we used so hyperandrogenism and hyper hyperandrogenemia so hyperandrogenism is a, a manifestation due to high androgen level so it can be a acne hirsutism or frontal alopecia and the hyperandrogenemia it refers to increased blood levels of androgen so uh, we have to understand these two terminology that will help in making our diagnosis and when we say oligomenorrhea it is defined as a interval between episodes of uterine bleeding longer than 35 days so if a female coming with abnormal like irregular periods so you have to ask how frequent she has periods uh, what is the frequency and coming to the polycystic ovarian morphology on the ultrasound so uh, if you see uh, almost 75% of the female with polycystic ovarian syndrome have this uh, peculiar ovarian morphology but uh, the important point to emphasize here that uh, it can be seen this polycystic ovarian morphology in 25% of the normal females and women with other endocrinopathy so you should not just think that if the in the ultrasound the report is polycystic ovarian morphology then straight forward level this patient as pcos it can be a normal phenomenon also so what this polycystic ovarian morphology stands for so uh, if the follicles are more than or equal to 20 in each ovary measuring 2 to 9 mm in diameter and the ovarian volume is more than or equal to 10 ml in either or both the ovaries and the endometrial lining thickness is more than 5 to 7 mm in thickness which indicates endometrial uh, thickening so there is uh, no formal proposed cl uh, formal classification of pcos i i am going to talk about a commonly used classification for pcos it can be mild the ovulatory pcos the hyperandrogenism and chronic anovulation pcos and severe pcos so when we say mild pcos it accounts for the 16% of the affected female uh, it characterized by irregular periods and polycystic ovaries on ultrasound there can be a mild elevated androgen concentration and there will be normal insulin concentration while ovulatory pcos it accounts for 16% of the affected females it is characterized by normal periods so uh, it is not always that in pcos you have irregular periods it can be a normal periods and then also the person can be diagnosed as pcos so almost ovulatory pcos accounts for 16% and the polycystic ovaries on ultrasound there will be elevated androgen concentration and increased insulin concentration the other uh, group is hyperandrogenism and chronic ovulation 
so it accounts for 7% of the affected females it is characterized by irregular periods normal ovaries on ultrasound enlarged androgen concentration and increased insulin concentration so i want to emphasize in this slide that the ovaries on ultrasound will be normal in morphology in this subset of the pcos and the severe pcos which accounts for 61% of the affected females characterized by irregular periods polycystic ovaries on ultrasound elevated androgen concentration and increased insulin concentration so there are no pathognomonic features that suggest pcos so it is a diagnosis of exclusion and that i am uh, uh, want to uh, emphasize here because straight forward seeing the ultrasound or seeing just irregular period don't label a female as pcos it can turn to be a different thing or it can be a normal manifestation sometimes also so criteria for pcos so it has uh, through the time we see there are different criteria so in 1990 national institute of health criteria for pcos uh, in which the three things should be present that is hyperandrogenism and or or hyperandrogenemia oligo or anovulation and exclusion of other disorder so it has been emphasized exclusion of other disorders is also a criteria in 1990 nih criteria in 2003 there is a rotundum criteria uh, i think um, many of the endocrinologists and physicians are following this criteria that in, in which two of the three must be present and other disorders must be excluded but sometimes uh, many mis do the mistake that they just see two of the three but they are not excluding the other causes that can be a fault so hyperandrogenism or hyperandrogenemia oligo or anovulation and polycystic ovaries on ultrasound now come the latest one uh, is 2006 androgen access society criteria so in which the all of the following must be present the hyperandrogenism in the form of hirsutism or or hyperandrogenemia in which the serum testosterone level is higher side ovarian dysfunction in form of oligo anovulation or polycystic ovarian morphology on ultrasound and exclusion of other disorder so no, the talk is about the pcos mimicker so let's start with the first one this is a non classical ch so nccah stand for non classical ch and this is due to partial deficiency of 21 and hydroxylase uh, deficiency so 21 hydroxylase deficiency uh, will lead to the same presentation the partial one complete will have a different picture complete ch will be present as ambiguous genitalia in in a in a in a just a newborn but partial deficiency of 21 hydroxylase deficiency will lead to non classical adult onset leading to irregular periods and it is very difficult to clinically uh, indistinguish between the non classical ch and pcos so non classical ch should be one of the differential diagnosis when you consider a pcos case so how do we uh, diagnose uh, a morning follicular 17 hydroxy progesterone level if it is less than 200 nanogram per uh, deciliter it rules out the disorder a value more than 800 uh, rules that it it can be there so then uh, we ask for the for the intermediate value we ask for the acth stimulation testing so a uh, women with a non classical ch with uh, with stimulation acth stimulation testing the 60 minute if 17 hydroxy progesterone value is more than 1000 nanogram per deciliter so just to uh, uh, make you more clear about why 17 hydroxy progesterone level is elevated because uh, if you remember your biochemistry classes 21 hydroxylase enzyme is responsible for the conversion of 17 hydroxy progesterone to 11 deoxycortisol so when this 21 hydroxylase enzyme is deficient then 17 hydroxy progesterone lo level is elevated now coming to the thyroid dysfunction both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism can lead to menstrual irregularities uh, but in the patient having thyroid dysfunction hyperandrogenism is absent so you will generally you will not get the features of hyperandrogenism uh, and i think uh, the hypothyroidism symptoms or hyperthyroidism symptoms uh, are present and uh, you can diagnose this disorder by just by simple tsh the other mimicker of pcos can be hyperprolactinemia so uh, hyperprolactinemia means the prolactin level is very high uh, there can be mild hyperandrogenic features may be observed in case of hyperprolactinemia galactoria is usually present so whenever a pcos uh, you are suspecting a female coming with menstrual irregularity and you are suspecting pcos ask for the galactoria whether galactoria is present or not so there can be headache or visual field defect uh, 
uh, due to the mass effect. And uh, prolactin level is greater than the upper limit of the normal range. Uh, now coming to other PCOS mimicker like Cushing syndrome. So when the circulating cortisol and androgen levels are elevated, uh, it can lead to Cushing syndrome. There will be obesity, hirsutism, acne, mansular irregularity, moon faces, a central fat deposition, hypertension, and proximal muscle weakness, abdominal stria, osteopenia. So uh, I think uh, typical clinical features of Cushing syndrome can be present. You can screen for the uh, uh, Cushing syndrome by 24-hour cortisol, urinary free cortisol. The normal range is less than 90 microgram per 24 hour. Or you can uh, ask for low-dose dexamethasone suppression test, where you will give dexamethasone at 11 p.m. to midnight, uh, 1 milligram, and then at 8 a.m. you will measure the plasma cortisol value. If it, the value is less than 5 microgram per deciliter, then it is normal, it is suppressed. But if it is higher side, that this means the test is positive. It can be androgen secreting uh, neoplasm. So uh, in this type of subset of patient, there will be rapid progression of hirsutism uh, in a short span of time. So within month, patient will come that uh, doctor, I developed uh, facial hairs and other things in a short span of time. So it can be steroid producing tumors of the adrenal or the ovaries. So uh, other features when androgens will be excess, there will be uh, frontal balding, severe hirsutism, increased muscle bulk, deep end voice, clitoromegaly can be there. And just you order for the baseline total testosterone, uh, the, it, the value will be more than 200 nanogram per deciliter. Uh, you can ask for uh, DHES also. Uh, if the value is more than 7,000 nanogram per ml, it should prompt the CT scanning for uh, look for the adrenal masses. Now coming to uh, one syndrome known as Hiran syndrome. There will be hyperandrogenemia, insulin resistance, and acanthosis nigricans syndrome, uh, also known as Hiran syndrome. So there will be degrees of insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and hyperandrogenism. So how it is diagnosed? So uh, fasting insulin you will order. Th the value of fasting insulin will be more than 80 micro uh, unit per ml. And the peak insulin value will be more than 300 uh, micro unit per ml during a 3 hour 75 oral uh, GTT. Various drugs can also mimic as a PCOS. So if somebody is, is misusing, a uh, female is using testosterone, anabolic steroids, uh, endostridion, so it can also le lead to a menstrual irregularity and PCOS-like picture. Some cases of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism can also mimic as PCOS. I am emphasizing on the important slides. So uh, this one is important, premature ovarian failure. So it will present with N ovulation, but hyperandrogenism is absent. The, there will be high serum follicle stimulating hormone and low serum estradiol. So what we have to order, so any case in which you are suspecting PCOS, so I, throughout my presentation, I emphasize that it is diagnosis of exclusion. So you have to exclude the mimickers. So the first investigations you will order for a PCOS case, the serum 17 hydroxyprogesterone level. So if the value is higher side, it is pointing towards non-classical CH. The serum prolactin value, so serum prolactin value because we are suspecting hyperprolactinemia as a PCOS mimicker. So if the value is higher side, th then we have to do MRI P2T protocol. Is there any mass is there or not? We have to ask for the drug history which can lead to increased prolactin value. Simple tests like thyroid function test, this should be a part of a protocol. Any patient coming with menstrual uh, uh, irregularity and you are suspecting PCOS, you should order TSH also. So uh, both hypo and hyperthyroidism can lead to uh, menstrual irregularities. Oral glucose tolerance test, uh, this test is also required uh, if we are suspecting insulin resistance because insulin resistance is one of the pathophysiology involved in polycystic ovarian syndrome. The fasting lipid prof profile, as I already emphasized the various complications of PCOS, so dyslipidemia can be there and can be observed. If there is a dyslipidemia, we have to manage that part also. Uh, the, the initial part with the, the investigations I emphasized was the first investigation. Other investigation, it depends upon case to case, uh, depending upon the clinical picture of the patient. So uh, uh, serum total and free testosterone you can ask for. So uh, the hyperandrogenism is present in 60 to 80 percent of the women with PCOS and 70 percent will have elevated free testosterone value. 
40% will have elevated total testosterone value and 25% have elevated dehydroabidone sulfate. So uh, DHES, uh, if it is very high, it can be due to uh, adrenal tumors also. If other serum androgens levels are normal, we can ask okay. for serum androstridion. The, the pelvic ultrasound, uh, I already emphasized the uh, PCOS morphology uh, in ultrasound. So uh, in a case where you are suspecting uh, there, uh, that uh, ovulation is not occurring properly, so you can ask for the luteal phase progesterone measurement. So it is generally performed at the date 20 to 24 of the menstrual cycle. And Hello. if the value is... Please conclude. Your time is gone. Okay. So it's five minutes are left, I think. Still five minutes left? It is showing, sir, five minutes. Two thirty-five. No, uh, in the si side view, time is showing five minutes. Yes, then finish. Okay. So uh, if, if the value is more than 2 to 8 nanogram per ml, it indicates ovulation has occurred. Uh, and then uh, the LH and FSH. So LH and FSH ratio, we can see if it is the value is more than 3, it is suggestive of PCOS. But it is not diagnostic of PCOS. So don't go just with a uh, idea that LH by FSH ratio should be more. Because in obese patient, LH will not be elevated and this ratio more than three will not be present. In lean PCOS patient, you will get LH FSH ratio more than three. So uh, in nut cell, PCS, uh, PCOS is a diagnosis of exclusion and PCOS mimickers should be ruled out by clinical criteria and the investigation. Thank you, thank you for your patience listening. Thank you.